Oh, this is going to be a fun outdoor watch review for TMPers. By request, by the way. I've had many TMPers, especially in Patreon, bug me about getting this Sunto Core WRV knocked out. For the last two and a half years, they've been seeing the Sunto Core in TMP Adventures. In the Zodiac Pro Open in the Pacific Ocean, for instance. In the Zodiac Futura, same location. Tactical shoots scuba diving <laughs> oh yeah the BOK adventure series when the storm alarm on the Sunto core was going off so a lot of dudes said hey man what do you think of the Sunto core is it still a great watch to buy short answer is yes it's a great watch a great standalone outdoor watch I love it we only paid 136 bucks for this or something around there about well two and a half years ago <laughs> And we got the basic black, this one right here. I, I've changed the strap out. We're going to talk about that. And I'm just going to tell you, this is probably going to be a feature length review on a flipping watch. <laughs> so if you're into such a thing, you're in the right place. If you've never watched, uh, I don't know, a 30 minute review on a watch, you go, what in the heck are you going to talk about for 30 minutes? Stay tuned. You might find yourself being drawn in to the TMP watch addiction. Okay, here's the intro. Uh, be careful about smart watches because they're addictive. They're like crack. I think the traditional watch market to include the outdoor watch market really needs to be aware of what's going on right now because most people are turning into a, are turning to a smart watch wear and then they don't go back to either a standalone outdoor watch, to a standalone digital watch, to a, a traditional analog timepiece. This is my beautiful Spinnaker Rec. Blue, by the way, it just makes me happy with that kind of worn case, black washed case, Italian leather strap. It's just really fun. But guess what? A lot of guys, and I should say the newer generation, like Millennial Z Geners, when they go into the smartwatch arena, they never come out. It's addictive. Now, I am a smartwatch user as well. I have always wear my Apple Watch Series 2 on my offside wrist, and they will swap out. So this is an EDC setup. I've shown and modeled it many times. I see a lot more people now doing this. When I started doing it, it was like, oh my gosh, you don't wear two watches. This is not a watch, it's a wrist computer. I always just switch it to this face for the WRVs, um, but uh, I have other information I just don't show you guys on my face, Series 2. And then I put my favorite analog timepiece on this side. Now when we talk about outdoor watches, the same phenomena can happen. And I'm talking about people who totally abandon a standalone Sunto Core type watch, maybe a Casio watch like this, and they go with the smartwatch variety. For instance, like the Casio Pro Trek, what is it? The WSD F20. Here's here it is in Amazon right here. Very cool watch. Also very limited battery life for now, but they're going to improve that. It syncs to your phone. It has GPS capabilities. It's an awesome timepiece. It has interchangeable faces, and they're constantly improved. And then Garmin makes their, uh, what is it, the Phoenix series, which is also excellent. But once you go to those, I, I wonder if standalone timepieces like this, standalone outdoor watches, are going to survive. I, I, I kind of think they may not. Not because they're not awesome, because they are. I recommend you go out and buy a Sunto Core right now. I do. It's pretty inexpensive for what you're getting. But I, I just don't know if people are going to support them. So time will tell. Hmm. Pun intended. Pun intended. <laughs> so we'll see if I'm right or wrong. I hope I'm wrong because I myself am a fan of standalone outdoor watches. And by that I mean we have an altimeter, barometer, compass feature that's not tied into our cell phone. That is completely self-contained within the timepiece or the wrist computer as the case may be. This is a PRG300. Casio, it's the same way. So it's standalone, long running battery, and this is actually solar powered. This one, it really is meant for backpacking and being out in, in the boondocks forever. 
that's what the PRG series is about. Except for that one I just showed you, the F20, the smartwatch. So here we have a basic black Sunto cord. This is one I decided to get for test and review. I think it just looks good. It has a positive LCD display. You do have versions that have a negative LCD display. They come in a bunch of different colors. I've seen pure white, and I think I had one of those, but I sold it. We had some different colors. They're all gone. We only kept this one. We're buying and selling watches all the time and usually usually losing our shirt on them when we do it. They have a gray version. Uh, I think they call it gray crush, graphite crush. You have a lime and black coloration and a bunch more of the Sunto Core. So you can actually get kind of a fashion statement with the Sunto Core, which is really cool because I myself get tired of basic black and that's why you see me changing out the straps going with different colors of watches. That's just me. Uh, I love black, but when you do you know, black timepieces over and over again, it gets a little bit bland. So what we're gonna do now, when we talk about a rather technical watch, it's straightforward, but you kinda gotta know how to run it, is I'm gonna talk about its aesthetics first, and I did that with uh, Navahawk by Citizen, and then I'll go into the features if you want to stick around for that. And I plan on doing it in one video. I think most y'all will care mostly about aesthetics. How does it wear? How does it look? Does it turn you on? Nothing fancy as far as a standalone outdoor watch. Well, this is a 22, actually that's a 24 millimeter. Really awesome coloration Zulu strap that I've put on here. And this is a, an adapter kit that I got from a place called J&K's. So this is a J&K's NATO adapter kit for the Sunto Core. So it did not come this way. As you're going to see in the Zodiac footage that I'll find and in, in insert, the, the strap that we wore is the one that came with it, this one right here. So it's the rubber strap, was form-fitted to the case. And it gives it a much more streamlined appearance. It's completely waterproof, of course. Dries out quickly. I'll just show you the strap very quickly. Double thin keeper, single clasp. And I scuba dove with this one, too. Uh, it's a really nice strap, actually. And I don't dislike the strap. Um, but during the summertime, I mean, it's winter when I'm filming this now. During the summertime, I kind of shy away from these types of straps because they're so darn sweaty. And so I'll adapt to NATO's, adapt to Zulu's. This is a PRG270 and it has a factory metal reinforced nylon strap just there for eye candy. And that's our old Bradley alias, by the way, at the top. Titanium folding knife, very cool. But that, that was how it came. And so it was a basic tactical black look. And then from there, and I'm gonna kind of cover some of my mods because again, we've had this watch for a long time. It's been in the project. and I. Maybe you can learn from where I've traveled with the Sunto Core. You can adopt something we've, we've done with it. Or maybe you just hate it and you want to keep it stock. The second place I went to try out, and I was just experimenting, is I went out and bought this strap right here. This is a beautiful 24 millimeter genuine Sunto strap. You can see it still has the thin keepers. Black and single, single stainless steel clasp. And then it came with... Uh, some adapter bars on it so it would fit on there so you can't just use these this is form fitted specific to the case we put those on and I ran this for a long time one thing I like about single single piece Zulu straps especially with a bigger watch like the Sunto Core is that it wraps it doesn't have to really crank on your wrist to get stability see how the straps kind of come over the, the bars like that and then they wrap around a two-piece strap will come more vertical and in order to get high stability for a larger watch, you kind of need to crank it down on your wrist. So that's a change, something I've learned over the years being a watch reviewer and a big watch user. I'm swapping through a bunch of different watches. That's why more and more you're seeing me running Zulu straps because I think they're more comfortable. But this is what we used at one time. It's riding on a beautiful Bell & Ross homage. Uh, infantry watch is what they called it. And this used to be an Amazon. I think it's all gone. At least this beautiful coloration is just... So cool looking. And so I just threw it on here. It still has that two-piece uh, conundrum going on, but it sure looks good on this watch, doesn't it? 
I mean, that looks great. So I'm always doing that. I'm swapping my bands out. It, it's a fun little thing to do. Back to the aesthetics of the watch, though. Another reason that you might want to keep the, the form-fitted rubber strap that comes on your Sunto Core is because it makes the case seem very streamlined. The case of the Sunto Core is actually kind of big, which I love, but it's also very kettle-shaped. It almost looks like a UFO, doesn't it? I mean, look, it's like kind of, well, kettle-shaped, and this is black and stainless steel. So when you're NATOing it or you know putting a Zulu strap on it, that's going to be exposed. It seems like it kind of pops out from the wrist a little bit more because you don't have these straps hiding the case. Just a little something some. And this has a 360 degree rotatable bezel here that you can use for your compass function. Go back to the normal timekeeping mode. There we go. So is that important? Um, I would say I've used it approximately 0%, but it is nice. It's something to play with. It's a mineral crystal, not sapphire. I have my crystal protective film on there. It it has helped. I used another one when I was diving with it. It wore out, so I've just recently replaced it. If we look at the face in the presentation, we're just considering aesthetics. One thing I love about the Sunto Core is it has a really high legibility, at least in this light. There are some people with a negative display that do complain that they can't read it and that's pretty common across the board casio same complaints i recommend you get a positive display and i think you can adjust its presentation too in the menu i could be wrong on that though so big numbers we can easily read it i love how they label the start stop functions here you're going to see it propagate like a little cue as we get into some of the functions that's pretty trick the lights right there this is your mode switch and you see the plus key uh, and a minus key actually for selecting in menu items. Now, one of my pet peeves about the presentation of the Sunto Core, and I'm not going to lie to you, it really super bugs me, is I don't like the big space right here. I wish that was user selectable. Right now, it's just showing the uh, barometric graph right now, what's going on, the weather trend graph, which shows flat. And that will go in the past 24 hours. I think each line is, well, I forget. I think that might be just 30 minute intervals as shown there. But it's showing flat. And you're going to see in this other Casio watch, it actually shows that that's not what's happening at all. <coughs> so uh, you, you might make a case that the Casio, and I may mention this again, is a more accurate outdoor watch. I think it has more functionality than the Sunto Core. Again, this is a PRG 300 in dusty olive and dusty orange. I love this coloration. One of the first watches I reviewed, actually. So if you go watch my review on that, I'll tell you all about it. But look at this smaller face. It is a smaller face, and I like the bigger face here. I just wish I could use or select this. The digits are about the same. You will notice, though, that, that they use different ways of showing the numerals. So you have, actually, bar segments in the Casio on the left and you have kind of a dot matrix display. I think the Casio is more legible overall as far as uh, contrast. Now on this bottom line we can change it and so we can go to the date. This is seconds running so you could leave it to set that. That's a second time zone. This is sunset and sunrise to be set in the menu of the Sunto Core. That's your timer function, and we might as well do that now so you can start it right here. It beeps, and then this is what I was talking about. See how that cue kind of propagates? That's telling you that if you push that, it's going to stop it. So if we push it, it'll beep to us. There's our timing, and then right here, see how that's propagated here? So if I press and hold that, it's going to reset it. Pretty cool. Now, also, the conventions are completely different than probably any other watch you own. And so if you're coming from a Casio background, you're going to have to relearn everything. And it just takes time, so be patient. I'm not saying the Sunto Core is complicated. It's not, but all the buttons are in different places, and they're just different. It's its own user interface. But then we can change the bottom line to timer. So I just have it set for 17 minutes, and we do the same thing. And it's starting, and I stopped it. 
and then I think right here I could reset it. Oh, it's still running. Yeah, there we go. Reset. And then it can go blank. So those are your bottom lines right there. Now the case, uh, like I said, is large. I didn't write it down, but I think I have my measuring device right here. This is important because if you have a small wrist, you know, will the Sunto core fit you? Um, it might. That's about 49 millimeters across. So that's kind of a bigger case. Once again, I love big cases. They make me happy. I'll try not to measure my nylon strap. 14 millimeters in thickness. And then lug to lug with this conversion that I have going. Remember, this is a J and K's conversion. You can just Google that if you're interested. 53 millimeters. So it's on a bigger side. If that's the case, I would definitely go with the PRG series of Casio because these are a lot smaller, a lot more compact. Uh, that's a PRG 270 in the larger old style Protrek case, which I love. But even that will be a little, actually this one's about the same size. I was thinking of this one right here. So those are aesthetics. How does it wear? Um, I think it's a relatively lightweight watch. <coughs> I forget the exact weight, but I, I forget that I'm wearing it. Um, I like the size of it. Let me show you on my wrist what it looks like with that Zulu strap. I won't tighten it, but I'll just lay it across my seven and a half inch wrist right here. That's what it looks like. Man, I really love that OD against that black. It's just really a cool look. Now, let me tell you about a weirdness of mine. And this is just me as a watch enthusiast. I'm not an orologist, never will be. I'm just a watch enthusiast, kind of a reviewer too, subset of TMP content. When I'm wearing my smart smartwatch or my Apple Watch, as the case may be, I usually don't wear a digital. I like going with an analog timepiece. It makes me happier. Uh, that's what I do. When I go backpack, and this is an AV8, was it 4051, I think? 4053. Look at that super cool color. Aviate's one of my favorite micro brands ever. So is Spinnaker. They're just super cool micro brands. But I usually don't wear another digital is my point because I feel like I'm digging out. Now, I talked about this smartwatch addiction. I think it's real. You can seek counseling for that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but I haven't fallen into that pitfall yet of, of just adopting one smartwatch and then not wearing anything else. I just don't see it happening because I derive such a fun enjoyment when I, with this stuff right here. I don't want to change. And I'll always wear a, a wrist computer on this side. Even when I'm camping or backpacking, that's kind of the way I went. I still wore my Apple Watch, but then I'd wear a standalone outdoor watch. That's just me, that's how I'm rolling. And I think that is aesthetics and how it wears uh, comfortably, rugged looking, has that cool presentation. Let's get into part two, heck, 18 minutes in. Going as fast as I can. And that is the functionality of the Sunto Core. If I were to get real with you, and I always do, the functionality is going to be basically what you're going to be using is this right here. Just look at the time. I don't think many people at all use the ABC functions, alt altitude, barometer. This has temp function in it as well. It actually has like uh, snorkeling depth too. I, I just don't think a lot of people use them. But we're going to rip through them. I'm going to show you briefly what they are a lot of guys don't care they're not going to use this stuff so I, I have to go quick now in a casio you're going to switch through the modes right here but in a sunto core this is your mode switch and the good news is that it is labeled clever cleverly right there <laughs> so we just press one and that puts us into altitude altimeter barometer function right here so it's showing our trend graph on the top. It's showing inches in mercury because that's what I have it set to. We can still see our dot matrix display. And I think this is a more accurate presentation of what's going on with the trend. And if you were to look at that cast, you can see that it is jibing, that pressure is going up, indicating good weather. On the very short display up there, I forget the exact uh, you know, amount of time that represents, but it's probably a much shorter span of time. So just press this, go there, and you'll see what's going on. And we can set a storm alarm. So if this suddenly dips down in a low pressure area, that means bad weather's coming. And you've seen that work on some TMP adventures. It will alert you. I don't think Casio has that function, by the way. This bottom part right here can be changed. And you can see the temperature here. 
strangely, you cannot, as I have found, like re-regulate that temperature. You can't set it. I've looked everywhere and it just is what it is. I don't like that about the Sunto core. It is one of its quirks. You can set it between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Obviously, I have it set there. This is a depth log. This is where you'd see the, the height achieved. Or if you were to go diving with it, this is where it would show right here. And I'm not going to go over this because you can go into like page 33, 35 uh, on recording logs and how the, the depth meters work. We don't got time here. This is my reference altitude that I programmed in there. And then we go back to time. So if you're hiking and you want to see your altitude, this would be another graphical representation you could have. it. So you could just leave it on altitude barometer and you could kind of see your trend graph and you have your time displayed there. And then if we press one more time, we should go into compass mode. Now you see that thin line there in the Sunto core? That's kind of your bearing. That's what it's pointing to. So if I point this way, this is showing, at least per the watch, that that's a 260 degree heading. And then you should see right here the north. Whatever, you can see it rotating right here. And this is where we'd rotate our bezel to match up with that north if we really wanted to. And then we could read a bearing. Again, you get in, in the, the manual and find all about that. So where's north? Right there. So one thing I don't like about the bezel, it should have a really big mark for north. It doesn't. So I'm just kind of showing how to do the bezel. Now you can calibrate the compass. It's on page 37 in the manual. Basically, I think means uh, rotating the compass flat like multiple times to recalibrate it. I think it's kind of hokey. I think the calibration on the on the I'm sorry the Casio product is much better and much more serious and, and more accurate. So if I press the compass function on the Casio, start compass, and this is where I'm going to screw it up. There it is. Start, stop, compass. Oh, what do you know? I had a little cue there. So let's see if they're about the same. So they're pointing in the same direction, and you can see they're way off. This is actually more accurate. And this is after calibrating it. And I'm going to bring up a compass right here. And this is a, a Brunton classic compass. And we're going to see what the Brunton says. And uh, So the red needle is north. Right about there. So if I turn this bezel on the compass to match up with the north needle, and by the way, this is not scientific at all, you can see that this direction roughly is about, I don't know, 275, 280, and the Sunto core is saying about 255. And I find that to be consistent with its compass function, that it's going to be like 30 to 40 degrees off. I have not been able to sync it up where it's tighter than that. That's all I'll say. So the... The Casios seem to work a lot more accurately. But again, I doubt you're ever going to use it. <laughs> if you have a smartwatch, you're pro a smartphone, you're probably using that. Okay, so that's these three buttons. The mode button, it'll jump from time, altitude, barometer, compass. And if you press and hold, it jumps into the menu system. Do you see that ring that rotated around? Jumps into memory. I do have the beep button turned off on the core right now. This is memory function, so... What I just showed you, so altitude, altimeter, barometer, this is where we do our logbook. Our recording interval is set here. To exit back, we do this right here, and it takes us back. We set time date right here. There's alarm. Remember that countdown function I showed you, 17 minutes? This is where you'd set it. It's right here, and this is the plus key to increase it, minus key there. Lower left to exit out and go back down. Time is set right here. This does not have an atomic clock on it, dudes. So you're going to manually set the time. It is also not solar powered. Luckily, though, it is powered by a, a CR2032 battery, which is super easy to replace. I love that about the core. Very cool. And I forgot to tell you what the waterproof was. 100 feet, 30 meters, you can see right there. I've gone through two batteries, uh, and this is my third. So I love that you use a 2032. It's such a great power cell. It's super common, super easy to replace. Dual time is set right here. There's your date set there. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Once you get the hang of it. Oh, you know what? I know why I went back to compass, because I pressed one too many keys. It was my fault.
Sunrise, this is interesting here because you're going to say I'm in the USA. You press select on that. What region are you in? I said I'm in the mountain region. And then what city are you in? Right now I said Salt Lake City. You'll set this for yourself as well. In the Casio products, what they'll ask is a latitude, longitude, or something like that. So they know exactly where you are. And then that's how they're going to tell you where you're, how your sunset and sunrise uh, times are. I just passed. I think you saw it though. Okay, and then one bounce out. Every time we press this lower left button, we're exiting to the last level we were at. Altitude and barometer, this is where we'll set our reference. This is a profile. You can jump in the manual for that. Here's your storm alarm. I have it turned off right now, obviously. Kind of annoying, to be honest. It, it, it just is. I usually will know what the weather's doing. But if I'm out in the woods or in the mountains for a long period of time, I'd probably run it. Compass, this is where I would set my declination. And if you're wondering if I had had it set correctly, the answer is yes, as far as I know. So you set it here to make your compass more accurate. You could play with that and maybe get it tighter. I haven't. Here's your general settings. Button tone I have off. Tone guides. Backlight. What do I have that set on? Any button. Cool. I'm going to show you that if I don't forget. Language is set here. And that's it, dudes. Whew. Cool. And then I think I can just press this one. Multiple times that will take us back to time. Or it should. There it is. Down and dirty the Sunto core. Let me show you the, the light, which I think is rather anemic. I'm not super impressed with the light on this sucker. And let's see if you can even see that. It's so bad. Okay, now we're dark in the missile silo. It's like, it looks like a negative backlit display. If I can find a screenshot of it, uh, I'll give it to you guys. Sorry, it's not representing on this camera. Weak. I would say the Casio backlight is so much better. I'm not going to show you. Go to my other vids and you can uh, where I've talked about it. It's so much better. User selectable, one to three seconds. Um, that's it, though. In every time piece I bring to table is going to have some weird quirks about it. The Sunto Core definitely does. Uh, as a review, you may or may not like its kettle-shaped case. Uh, when you run a strap on it, it's going to reveal. You may not like that. I actually have learned to like it. I don't mind it. I like the adaptability and the breathability and the cool factor of just easily swapping out my NATO and Zulu straps. I don't like at the top here. This should have been user selectable that we could put with any, any type of presentation we want up there. Maybe a dual time or something. Something really cool. Some type of animating graphic. I think this top of the screen is wasted basically. Um, and the rest are really minor quirks. I mean, I wish I could synchronize, or I, could, I should say calibrate the temperature like I can on a Casio, but I can't. Everything else I like, and the price on this thing is actually very inexpensive, 136 bucks. It's not a smartwatch, doesn't tie to your phone, doesn't sync up with Fort Collins every night. By the way, this one does. The PRG 300 series totally does. And by the way, you can change your graph up here. So as Casio gets it, see how I can change this? So the whole display is being used. This is a smaller watch. It's going to fit better on a lot of wrists. But I like the wrist presence of the Sunto Core. I like its colorations. It's low price. I think it's made very well. There have been a couple criticisms on it. I talked about the negative display one. The bad compass is a criticism. That's kind of common, by the way. Some dudes said they had dust under their crystal. But I think what happened is they may have left their case back off when they were changing the battery. We did shallow dive with this thing and we got no leakages at all with the Sunto Core. Although I don't think it's true calling it is as a dive watch like these ones could be. I mean, these are like, what, 100 meters, these PRG series. Pretty sick. I've dove with these no problems at all. Another Casio product, I don't know if they're still making this one. This is kind of an anti-ditch presentation. It's a PRG 280 reviewed separately. I don't even know when I'm posting that review, but I know I have reviewed it. But dudes, look at the difference in wrist presence. Oh my goodness, that is a cool looking watch, that 280. I just love it. Uh, different though, it's Anna Dig. You're going to have you know some hands uh, occluding some of the data there, but it's still super legible. And 
I was going to bring a Mudmaster to the table and show you that one as well, but it's a completely different price range. Unless you go with a GG1000, which is about, that's 200 bucks or so, and it's going to have some of the functionality. It's not atomic, but it'll be, I think, ABC. If you don't know if the, the wrist thing is going to work for you, the size, you might want to go with an homage to the Sunto Core. Use my links below. This is one of them right here. It's called an SKMEI watch. It's obviously, you know, mimicking the Sunto Core looks, albeit its digital presentation is enormous, and I do like it. And here's an olive drab version. I like this one even better. This is cool. So this is really aping the Sunto Core big time, but it doesn't have near its functionality at all. But you could get one of these. They're like, what, 15 bucks, 10 bucks? Wear it around and see if you like it. And if you like it, then go get the genuine thing. That's what I always say. It's kind of nice you have that option. Uh, out of time, though. Great watch, Sunto Core. Uh, I don't plan on getting rid of it. It's just a really cool standalone outdoor watch. And it's nice to have an alternative to the Casio product. Thanks for watching TMP Watch Show in continuation. Bye bye.